Today I've got a small job to repair and restore some kitchen work surfaces in a local Airbnb. I haven't seen it in person yet but I have been sent some photos so I kind of know what to expect and I've packed up the tools that I think I'll need to do the job. As this was an Airbnb apartment, I needed to complete all of the work in between guests. So I had a window of one day to complete the work and the new worktop finish would need to cure in time for the next guest to arrive. The kitchen was split into two areas, the main stretch of worktop here and then a little corner section through here. There were some white watermarks which were pretty bad and also some dark watermarks but the worst area was over here by the taps which had started to turn mouldy and also these routed grooves for draining into the sink. First I'm going to use my card scraper. I chose scraping instead of going straight to sanding because A it cuts through the old finish quickly, B it's less dusty and C if I went straight to sanding the sandpaper would quickly clog up with the old finish that was on the work surface meaning I'd go through a lot of sanding discs. I did all of the scraping in the same direction as the wood grain rather than across the grain which would leave scraping marks. The other thing I like about scraping is that I can concentrate more on the areas that have wear and stains on them and keep taking shavings until they disappear and as the shavings are so fine I know I'm not going to accidentally create a dip in the work surface which is easy to do when using an electric sander. For the areas that weren't badly worn or stained, they just got a light scraping to remove as much of the old oil finish as possible. I have a video all about the card scraper. It's a relatively easy tool to use, but there is a bit of technique required to prepare the edges for cutting. So in that video I cover how to use it, how to prepare it for use, and why I think it's such a brilliant tool. And I'll link to that in the description box below if you're interested. I also scraped the edges of the work surfaces. For the areas that were hard to reach, like around the tap, I used my carbide scraper. There's a link to this along with all of the other tools that I like to use in the My Tools link in the description box below. This is a tool I reach for all of the time. It works great and the carbide blade stays sharp for ages. Once all the scraping was done, I sanded all the hard to reach areas by hand with 100 grit paper and I rolled up the sandpaper to get into these round cove grooves. Then I vacuumed all the surfaces using a brush attachment because I want to remove any dust or grit that might have been left over from the scraping and sanding that could potentially get trapped in the sanding discs that I'll be using next. I started at 80 grit using my random orbit sander. The aim was to remove any of the old oil finish that I hadn't removed while scraping and get back down to bare wood. I do the sanding in the direction of the wood grain once again, keeping the sander flat at all times and moving the sander very slowly. That doesn't make for very interesting footage though, so here's a time lapse instead. I've got my sander hooked up to a shop vac to help capture as much of the dust as possible and I also wore a respirator so that I don't breathe in any airborne dust. I'm also using Abronet discs which allow more of the dust to be sucked up into the vacuum compared with the ordinary sanding discs that you can buy. Even though I'd done lots of scraping, the sandpaper still clogged up eventually, as you'll see here. I did only use one disc to do the entire kitchen though, and I'm sure I'd have used many more if I hadn't done the scraping first. I sanded the edges of the work surface using my sanding block. Then I fitted a 120 grit sanding disc and sanded it again to get the surface nice and smooth. I didn't take the sanding any higher than 120 grit because the finish I'm going to be using says on the tin not to sand any higher than 150 grit to allow the finish to soak in. I then used a brush attachment on the vacuum again to pick up any dust and then it was time for lunch. The finish I'm going to be using is a hard wax oil and this is actually my first time using it. It's a blend of natural oils and waxes which penetrates the grain of the wood and dries really hard. It's pretty expensive but I chose it because it's meant to be almost as hard wearing and long lasting as a polyurethane type finish but with more of a natural feel and also it's meant to be easy to do patch repairs on should the need arise in future. It's also food safe once cured. For those reasons, to me, this seems like the perfect finish for kitchen worktops that are going to see a lot of use and abuse. I applied it with a paintbrush in the direction of the grain, aiming for a thin coat with even coverage. 
It's important not to apply it too thick because apparently that prevents it from soaking into the wood properly. Here I'm masking up the hob so that I can do the edges of the worktop without getting oil on it. So that's the first coat of hard wax oil done and I really like it. It's nice to apply, really brought out the depth in the grain. You can see it kind of shimmering in the light. Very nice. This product takes four to six hours to cure so once it was applied I did a bit of tidying up after myself and I went home and left it alone. So it's been just over four hours and I'm back just to have a look. Finish looks quite nice. Feels pretty good too, but I think I am going to give it a light rubbing down before giving it one last coat. I used a scotch Bright pad to rub down the finish. Usually I use 400 grit wet and dry paper to denib, but I wasn't sure if that would work with a wax finish, and now was not the time to experiment, so this was a safe option. This scotch Bright pad came from a sander that I no longer have, so it was good to find a use for it. And then I gave the worktops a second and final coat of finish. This job took about six hours in total and I was really happy with the finished result. Most of the stains came out entirely. There were one or two that had penetrated the wood really deep that didn't completely disappear, but they were really hard to spot by the time two coats of the oil finish had been added. I could have gotten rid of them completely with more scraping, but I figured that a stain which is really difficult to see is better than a worktop that isn't perfectly flat, so I didn't want to remove too much material. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more weekly woodworking videos. You can also support the channel on Patreon if you'd like to receive early access to my videos, project plans and cut lists, exclusive content, and a name credit at the end of my videos too. Thank you for watching.